So how do we defend, challenge, or qualify? What is it that you need to do with that type of writing prompt? So what does the want, prompt want from you? Okay, these are the different things that it could be asking you and different ways that it could be worded. And then we'll go ahead and break down defend, challenge, qualify so you know how to answer. Write an essay that defends, challenges, or qualifies. That's the one you're going to see most often. Write a carefully argued essay that agrees or disagrees with. So if you agree with something, you defend it. If you disagree, you challenge it. Write an essay in which you develop a position on the issue. Write an essay in which you consider the extent to which of an author's observation holds true. And that might be a little bit more of qualifying. Write an essay that explores the validity of. Write an essay in which you evaluate the pros and cons of the author's argument. And that would be use appropriate evidence as you examine each side, and that would be more qualifying. So the things that you would need to use to support yourself, evidence that is specific, evidence that's from your own observations, your own experiences, or other readings. Draw on your own knowledge and experience. So that information only comes from your brain. It doesn't come from a book sometimes. Use your own critical understanding, again, just your brain, and use appropriate evidence which can come from the text. So we have defend, challenge, or qualify. We are going to support, argue, or validate something. Support is to defend. Challenge is to oppose or refute or argue and qualify is to validate something. To what extent is this true or not true? To what extent do you agree or disagree would be validate. And so we're going to use some action words when we defend here. So when you write, you want to support what the author is trying to say. Find a minimum of three specific reasons that prove your defense. Use quotations in your essay and logi logically explain why the author's words are valid. So you're defending here, you're supporting, you're going to defend your thoughts. To defend, you agree. Your answer would be yes to whatever prompt. If you're defending a writer's claim, you need to do more than simply echo views you agree with. So don't just repeat what you think the author wants to hear. Even as you're agreeing, it's important to bring something new and fresh to the table. Add something that makes you valuable participant in the conversation. And even though it's written, it's a written conversation. The essence of the author's argument is that blank. Um, you could say the author's understanding of blank is extremely useful because it sheds insight on the issue of. I agree that because I agree with that because my experience of blank confirms it. This would be a template that you might use when you're defending or supporting. So this would be something useful to either write down, take a picture of with your phone, or um, like a screenshot here. Words and verbs that support agreement. These are verbs that you would use for your strong verbs instead of saying said. Acknowledge, admire, agree, endorse, extol, praise, reaffirm, support, verify, corroborate, or celebrate the fact that. If any of those you don't know what they mean or you don't feel comfortable using them, you shouldn't use them. You should then use something else you're more comfortable with on the list. So to defend means you support it. You agree. Here are some more templates for agreeing. Again, another opportunity for a screenshot or put it into your notes. I agree that blank because my experience is of blank. The authors surely write about blank because as they know, as they may not be aware, recent studies have shown that blank. The author's theory of blank is extremely useful because it sheds light on the difficult problem of blank. Those unfamiliar with this school of thought may be interested to know that it basically boils down to. These are all great prompts that will help your academic writing really elevate. So the second piece here is the challenging. After reading the essay, determine the reasons why you don't agree with the author. This would be where you oppose, refute, or argue with the author. Find specific citations that you are challenging. So find the specific reasons in the text that you're challenging and what you're challenging. And explain your assertions. Consider providing a better argument, maybe a possible solution. So if you are challenging a writer's claim, you need to do more than disagree. You must offer persuasive reasons why you disagree. You must go beyond the expected and bring something fresh to the conversation. So tell me why you would disagree and then tell me how you would make it better. Tell me how the author is flawed or weak in their argument. So this is where you're opposing, refuting, or arguing you are challenging. The essence of blank, the author's argument is that 
I think the author is mistaken because of focusing on blank, he or she overlooks the deeper issue of. There is a writing template to start your assertion statement. Here are some strong verbs you can use. Complain, complicate, contend, contradict, deny, deplore the tendency to, qualify, question, refute, reject, renounce, and repudiate. And I would say again, if there are words you don't know what they mean or you're uncomfortable with, choose another word from the list, but there are enough there that you should be able to choose something other than the word said. Here are some templates that you could use. Disagree with reason. The author is mistaken because she overlooks. The author's claim is that blank, and it rests upon the questionable assumptions that. I disagree with the author's view because, as recent research has shown, the author contradicts herself. On one hand, she argues blank, but on the other hand, she also says, and by focusing on blank, the author overlooks a deeper problem of blank. All of those are acceptable um, templates to use in your commentary or assertion statements when you are challenging, which is opposing, refuting, or arguing, meaning you disagree. To qualify, you're going to both defend, which means validate the author's point that makes sense, find evidence from the author, and explain why it is reasonable to support these statements. After defending, you will then challenge, which means you're going to argue points you seem don't seem logical to you. Find evidence and then provide an explanation proving your position. So you're both defending and challenging. This might be if you have a prompt that you think I can't go to one side or the other so you have to do both. In qualifying you show the readers you understand the complexities inherent in the issue at hand. Your argument will be more complicated and nuanced while demonstrating clear reasoning. In qualifying, you have the freedom to learn subtly toward agreement or disagreement. So you can go either way. It's kind of taking the middle road. Here is your template for qualifying. Although I agree or disagree with blank up to a point, I can or cannot accept his or her overall conclusion that. The author is right or wrong in, in that blank, but they seem, they seem more dubious ground when they claim that blank. Though I concede that blank, I insist that. All of these are things that help guide your thoughts. They come piece together an academic view. Here are further templates. Although I disagree with the author up to a point, I cannot accept his overriding assumptions. Although I disagree with much of what the author says, I fully endorse or agree his final conclusions that. Though I concede that, I still insist that. The author is right that, but seems on more dubious ground when they claim that. Whereas the author provides an ample evidence that blank, Y and Z's research or the author's research on blank and blank convinces me instead. So you're going with the yes and the no. To what extent is it true and untrue and to what extent do you agree and disagree? That would be to qualify. Please write your summary. Be specific to tell me what does it mean to defend, challenge, and qualify. When would you use those? And then give me some verbs or templates that you might um, use to construct that writing. You will need to construct this writing in class in about a 20 minute period on Tuesday.